I have to try it. Nope, nothing. The Neo is a brand new style drone from DJI, which offers a bunch of intriguing features at a really low price point. In this video, I'm gonna test out everything I can think of, and we're gonna find out if this drone is a gimmick or a game changer. I'm gonna go a bit against DJI's advice here and test out the Neo for the first time indoors. What I think I'm supposed to do is if I just hold down this button on the front, it should take off and do everything on its own. So let's see what happens. Okay, well that was easy. I'm gonna walk back here, let's see if it follows me. And it's definitely following me. It is pretty noisy, but it's definitely quieter than the original Avata 1 was, which is good because that thing was really loud. It's doing a pretty good job. Let's see if I go down. Oh, that's cool. Okay, now I'm gonna test out the landing. So in theory, what I can do now is just put my hand directly underneath it and it should just land in my hand. Okay, that was really cool. This thing is gonna be a lot of fun. So obviously one of the really cool things about the Neo is that you don't actually need a controller to use it. However, DJI do include a controller with the Fly More combo. So I'm keen to test it out and see how it performs. It's obviously gonna have better range and better control if you use this controller. And it's gonna be cool to see how it compares to something like the Mini 4 Pro. First flight with the controller. Hopefully it doesn't get taken out by any seagulls, but let's see what this drone can do. Take off. Okay, so my first thoughts are that it is pretty slow. However, it is so small, like what do you actually expect? But you know what, this actually looks pretty good. I'm going sideways, but there's no evidence of that in the shot. So I wonder if there's like a digital stabilization or something. Now, obviously this drone is just a one axis gimbal. So it's not gonna provide stability in the yaw and the roll direction. But for some reason, the footage looks like it's on a gimbal right now. So there's gotta be some digital stabilization going on in there. Okay, there you can definitely see a bit of the effect of not having a gimbal. So it's really not going to be as stable as a Mini 4 Pro or a drone like that. Okay, let's try it in sport mode. Okay, so now I'm going to pull back full speed. And it's doing a pretty good job, to be honest. And while I'm up there, I might as well take a photo. So we can only shoot in JPEG. Let's try and do a little pano. This is a JPEG straight from the camera and it actually looks pretty good. If you zoom in, you will see that the quality isn't as good as what you get from a more expensive DJI drone. I manually shot this panorama and then stitched it together in Lightroom and I think it looks pretty awesome. And we're at about 50% battery now with, I think we've been flying for about four minutes. So that's not too bad because I've really been pushing this thing basically sport mode the entire time. Oh, that is really just so cool. I can't get over that hand catch. I wish all DJI drones could do that. The DJI Fly app with this drone works really well. So you can obviously view all your photos and videos and download them directly to your phone, or you can control the drone. So we've got all these different options here. And there's also the manual control option, which gives you virtual joysticks on screen for you to fly the drone. And then we've also got all the settings for the different parameters. So you can change all these settings in the app and the next time you use that mode on the drone, it will remember these settings. And then we've also got custom camera settings. Currently the highest resolution is 4K 30 and you're stuck to normal color profile. Unfortunately, there's no way to manually adjust the sharpness for these modes in the app as of now. And if you wanna format, you can click there and it'll format the internal storage. Oh, sh 
If you ask any videographer or photographer, it's way more likely a matter of when it happened to them, not if it happened to them, in terms of a card or a drive failing. And that kind of scenario also really used to freak me out before I discovered Wondershare Recover It. I think it was about a year ago when one of my micro SD cards failed and I tried three or four different types of software and Wondershare Recover It was the only one that managed to rescue those files and get them off the corrupted SD card. So when they reached out to me, I was very happy for them to sponsor a video of mine. I'll show you how simple it is to use right now. You just plug in your formatted card, storage device you deleted files off, or a corrupted device, and it will pop up on the dashboard. Then you click scan, and the software automatically find the deleted files, and then you can choose to recover them. It's honestly super simple and stress-free. And the new version of the software can now support external devices and NAS recovery with an improved success rate of 99.5%. If you use the link in the description below, you can try it out for free. And trust me, this is software you want installed when you run into this nightmare scenario. Back to the video. I've got this beach in Cape Town all to myself. So it's gonna be perfect for testing the Neo with some tracking shots. And I've got my one wheel here. So we're gonna try and keep up with me on the one wheel. And then I've also got some FPV equipment with the goggles and the controller. And I've also got the Avata 2 with me. So I'm gonna put those head to head, see how they perform. But it is really windy out here today. So I don't know how it's gonna affect it, but I really hope the Neo doesn't blow away. So with the Neo, how you select your mode without a controller or your phone is you push this little button on the front there and it'll cycle between all the options you have. So for this one, I think I'm gonna try Spotlight. And let's see how it goes. I am pretty nervous. So I hold that down. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> it's fighting the wind, but it's holding. Okay, let's see how you do, my friend. Wow, it is really fighting the wind. I hope you can see that in the camera. But you know what, it's doing a good job. It's tracking me. <laughs> That's actually pretty incredible, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, let's see if it'll land. Okay, wow, that was genuinely impressive. I didn't think it would handle the wind that well. I'm gonna try follow now. I think it'll be fine downwind. It's more the upwind that I'm concerned with. And it's following me. I think I need to emphasize how windy it actually is. But genuinely, this is pretty impressive. And I'm turning around. Now we're gonna go downwind again. Let's pick up a bit of speed this time. It didn't lose me once that entire time. Time for a bit of FPV. First, we're gonna go with the motion controller. Okay, so we're moving. <laughs> we're fighting the wind quite light here. There we are. We've got some speed, we've got some speed. Okay, this is pretty fun. Okay, now we're in sport mode and, oh, we've definitely got a bit more speed. Yeah, you're gonna wanna be in sport mode if you're flying this thing with the motion controller. Okay, let's go downwind. Okay, downwind, yeah, we've got a bit of speed here. This is quite fun. The motion controller is fun, but if you want the full experience, you've got to use this controller. And this thing actually has a full manual mode, which I'm really surprised by. And what that means is you can control every way this thing is going to turn. So you can do flips, rolls, spins, anything. Oh, wow. And now we are cruising. <laughs> Let's rip this thing. I'm gonna go upwind so I can do a bit of a downwind uh, flight here. Let's see how fast we can bring this thing. Wow, we are cruising, look at that. <laughs> Let's do a couple flips. Oh, took a bit of a tumble into the sand. But you know what? I think it's perfectly fine and we can take it up again. Interestingly enough, when you use the goggles, you get more control over your camera settings. So in here, I can change it from 16 by 9 to 4 by 3 aspect ratio. 
and I can also adjust the sharpness and noise level settings. So I'm gonna go now and adjust it to minus two for sharpness, which I prefer in general on these drones. And we're gonna fly in four by three. And I know with four by three, you have to manually stabilize the footage using gyro flow. And when you're in 16 by nine, it's gonna apply EIS automatically. Now, oh, <laughs> another tumble in the sand, but I think he's all fine. You can see from my testing that if you put the Neo through some manual maneuvers that are a bit too extreme, the motors actually give up. And the one time I tried to do a flip while going at full speed and it just fell out of the sky. And the other time I was going at full speed and I tried to switch it into normal mode and then it also collapsed. So when you're pushing this drone to its limits, just make sure you're above dry land. One really cool thing about this charging hub is if you've got it connected to a source which can provide up to 45 watts, you charge all three batteries at once. While the Neo batteries are charging, I'm gonna take up the Avata 2. And as you can see, the Neo is a lot smaller than the Avata 2, but obviously this guy is gonna give better performance and a better camera and all of that. Unfortunately, I don't have any filters for the Avata 2 yet, but I'm gonna do the best I can to get some cinematic shots here. As you can see from the side-by-side -side comparisons, the Avata 2 is going to outperform the Neo in stability, resolution, frame rates, dynamic range, and detail. So basically in every category. But again, this isn't too surprising because the Avata 2 is much more expensive and much bigger and heavier than the Neo is. So we just stopped at this beautiful lookout point at Aquila Game Reserve and I'm going to take the Neo up and try some of the built-in modes. And what I've also done is I've got the DJI Mic 2 here and apparently you can use the mic from your phone or an external mic and it'll completely cancel out the noise of the drone. So I really want to see how well that works. So we're going to try the Helix mode first. And it should just do its thing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so I'm obviously not doing anything right now and the drone is just following us. That's actually a pretty cool shot. And I can hear the drone, it's pretty noisy right now. So let's see if the recording from the microphone cancels out that sound well. All in all, I think the DJI Neo is a really good addition to their lineup of drones. It delivers what it says it can do without being gimmicky, which is really important. I do have a couple gripes with the drone though, and the first being that I would really like to be able to adjust the digital sharpening in the normal video modes. Just because for me, right out of the box, the default is way too over sharpened and I just don't like that look so much. The second thing is, this drone is gonna be used primarily for social media, right? So it's really strange that there's no vertical shooting mode. And I think DJI even could have installed a natively vertical sensor on this drone and nobody would have complained. But at a bare minimum, I really hope in the future they do bring out an update which lets you use the full height of the sensor and at least you've got a vertical shooting option to choose from. As an entry-level FPV drone, I don't think the Neo makes that much sense because if you don't have them already, you would have to buy the goggles and the controllers separately and that's gonna end up costing way more than even the drone costs. But I do have a hunch that DJI might come out with a more budget-friendly goggle solution in the future 
in which case this could become a really viable entry-level FPV drone. For years, I have had people coming to me saying, I wanna buy a drone, this is my budget, and I have to tell them, sorry, your budget is just not high enough to buy a decent drone. But with the Neo, I think I can finally recommend something to them. So the standalone model retails for 200 US dollars and the fly more combo with the controller and extra batteries retails for 350 US dollars. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please consider subscribing to see more like it in the future and also don't forget to try out that free Wondershare Recover It trial, link in the description below. I promise you if you ever run into that issue this software is going to make you feel so much better and more relaxed.